and I am here today to introduce to you guys and make some soup bowl hot pad cozies and these ones are just slightly different from what you would ordinarily use I have a pattern for you guys that is complimentary but it has a curved edge instead of the pointy edges um, you can still make the pointy edge ones but this I wanted to show you guys how to make the curved soup bowl hot pad cozy so um, we're just kind of doing some fun little um, videos today of some quick things that you can use up your scraps with or your batting scraps too. I love using up my batting scraps because I always end up with lots of pizzas, pieces of batting scraps. Of course, I did not want to put soup in this for a live video because I have a tendency to spill things when I'm doing lives or burn myself maybe with an iron. So we don't want to do that today. Hi, Molly. Hi, Robin. How's everybody doing today? Uh, let me know where you guys are from. I'm in Salt Lake City, uh, Utah. Uh, hi, Lara. Hi, Lynette. Yeah, these really are such great gifts, and they are so easy and fun to make. I bet a bunch of you guys have already made these, but we're going to put a new twist to it where it has a curved edge instead of the pointy edges. And I don't know. I just kind of like things curved, but pointy edges are good too. So I'm going to show you how to do this method. We're going to have a fun live video. Let me know what it's like where you are living and what you guys are doing and all the things that are going on. Um, I am here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So right now, let me go ahead and show you. Well, on Monday, we did this video tutorial where we just did the square hot pad. We've done the other video tutorials and there's complimentary patterns for like this um, cookie sheet hot pad. So I'm going to set these aside and I have got a pattern for you that is complimentary. You can just go and download it, but it's available for you for the curved soup hot pad. If you are wanting that, let me know in the, in the comments so that then, um, it will send these to you. So lots of different step out instructions with pictures and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, I'm going to set this aside because I think I remember how to do it today. Well, I know I do. Anyways, this is a fun one to make. So, and I have just a whole bunch of these and I um, just kind of do different um, fun colors and then I stack them up. Look, this one I've kind of smushed. I was just laying on it or, and I just stack them up and they're available for the family to use. They're also great gifts to give. Um, they could be used for other things than just for soup. You could be storing some little things in this next to your sewing machine. Um, you know, maybe your magnetic pin cushion or who knows what, some of your little goodies that you've got. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. Yes, I'm so excited you guys are all here. Let's have some fun and let's be upbeat and positive with um, all the things that are going on in the world. So for this one, um, I am once again, I just, I love the classic, um, the classic buffalo plaid, the black and white, and I just love how it works for really any time of the year. You can make these for holiday times. I've got this in some red buffalo plaid. You can see some of my other plaid obsession here, or not obsessed, but I just love to have it around. I just think it's fun and it's classic. So you really just need two pieces of fabric, and then you need two pieces of batting, 10 inches square. I bet you have that laying around, and if you don't have it laying around, I'm also a quilt shop, so you can buy some yardage um, at Stitches Quilting. So um, anyways, and I've got some sale fabric for you. There's Christmas sale fabric um, that some people have scooped up already, but it's on this one, and it's literally $4 a yard. So I looked, and that's how much this is. Um, these are actually about $10 a yard, but yeah, there's some really good sale fabric going on. So, and you can find that in the post of uh, at Stitches Quilting. Hi, Delinda. Hi, Maureen. Um, hello, Tamara. Hello, everybody. So, Tamara's in Southern California. Okay, this is so easy. 10 inch square. You can put in a piece of thermal lamb if you want to, so that it just has a little bit more ins insulation if you want. Um, whatever you want to do, I'll go ahead and I'll show you how, but if you do thermal lamb in it, please know you cannot microwave it if you're using this thermal lamb by Pellin. 
Okay, you're not supposed to put that in. So, but you can do either that one or use two pieces of batting with um, two pieces, two 10 inch squares. So I already got this one prepped. The first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to quilt these. So they're gonna have like a fun little quilted look. I have changed my um, little quarter inch foot. I can show you this real fast. I'm sure you guys already know this. This is a quilting foot that typically we use as quilters. It's a quarter of an inch seam and it's just real nice and tiny so that that measures a quarter inch. I'm gonna take that off because when I'm dealing with multiple layers, I might kind of nip the, the quarter inch foot and break my needle and stuff. So I'm gonna put in just a regular um, foot that has a little bit larger of an opening. You could also use your, uh, let me grab this. You could also use your, your, your quilting foot. Oh my gosh, this is my old one from my, my very first sewing machine when I started learning how to quilt. Look at that, that's so fun. My other one's outside, you guys, because I've been quilting and sewing outside. Hi, Tony from Hawaii, it's so good. Okay, what batting works best, you guys? Whatever batting you have. But I think personally, a warm and natural batting works best for me. This is what I typically use. It's really nice and thin. And um, this is what I use in my quilts. I, I love to work with warm and natural. It's 80% wool, 20%, um, it, it, actually this is a Hobbs brand, but it's 80% wool, 20% cotton. And, but any, any of these work, you could use other different kinds of batting because you're not going to, you're just using a hot bowl of soup with this. You're not going in and reaching in and picking up really hot things anyways. So but that's what I use and I think it, it does. And yes, Lynette, let's say it again. You need cotton um, if it goes into the microwave, okay? No polyester in the microwave. So some people might take their bowl of soup, put it in here, and then they might microwave their bowl like this in the microwave so that they're when they pull it out, they're not touching a hot bowl, okay? So sometimes that happens. So just so you know, no polyester in the microwave. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So I can't say it enough. So let's go ahead and just use two pieces of regular batting. And, but you can use thermal lamb. And I have got lots of that here too. So I have already quilted one of these and I just put an X through it. You don't need to necessarily, this is going to be stitched up into a curved like thing. So you don't have to be perfect on your square. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around so you guys can see what my sewing space is like. And I'm gonna take you step by step on how to do this. So I guess maybe I should tidy up my space a little bit. It's not so bad, it's cute. Okay, let me go ahead and flip the camera for you guys. It's so good to see you guys. I look forward to it each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. At noon, you guys brighten my day. Okay. So you can see here, I've already stitched an X in just one piece of fabric with the batting behind it, okay? I just went ahead and I did that. Now I'm going to do another one. And you could use thermal lamb if you want to, uh, but you don't want to microwave anything that isn't cotton or wool, okay? So let's go ahead and set this one up. Just kind of stick into each other, which is nice. And you don't need to stick too many pins in this um, because normally, and let me set aside these extra fabrics because I cut them as a stack, just like how I did on Monday. So I could easily make a whole bunch of these. Okay, that looks good to me. I will just kind of stick a pin in each side because the way I'm going to quilt this is like an X. So I'm gonna be mindful about where I'm putting in my pins. I'm not gonna put in a pin where my stitching lines are so that then I have to go ahead and move it yet again. So let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. I'm using cotton thread and I am gonna go ahead and just stitch this across. I have it marked it. Um, you can mark it though, it's up to you, but I just don't really feel the need to mark that. So I went ahead and I did this side and I'm going to stitch, pull this around Let's do the other side right here. And then we're gonna to get to the fun part. I'm gonna give you guys the instructions, but remember, there's a pattern that you can download online. 
So there is a pattern that you can download online. And if you're on my Stitches Quilting Facebook page, you guys be sure to, to, to subscribe. And um, But this is your pattern. It's got great instructions. But there's a pattern online for people that might have just popped on. All right, so you can see I've quilted this one just like that. Okay, let's take out the pins. So I now have two pieces with the, with the X. So I have two pieces of 10 inches square and two pieces of cotton batting. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just set this aside. I'm gonna fold this in half where the X is. So I'm gonna fold it right here and I'm gonna go like that, all right? And I am going to measure on this. I'm going to measure, let's turn it this way, two inches down, oh, I dropped my Sharpie marker. This is actually the same Sharpie marker from years ago when I wrote this pattern that's in the um, that's in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna mark two inches down. So you can see two inches down and one inch over. Okay, we're gonna mark this on each one of these little things. So let's go ahead and just do that again because this is going to give us the shape so that it'll be like a bowl cozy. Let's do the same thing over on this side. Okay, I'm marking two inches down and I'm marking one inch over. I can see on my, my, my cutting mat right there. So two inches down, one inch over, and I'm gonna mark that. And let's go ahead and fold it this way. So you can see, I've got these two marks right here, okay? Let's go ahead and fold it over, and remember, this is all in the instructions. I'm gonna have to clean off my ruler when I'm done with this. But I'm using a good Sharpie marker so that you guys can see just how I'm doing this, and you guys can see my lines that I'm making. Um, because, oops, I'm kind of going at a different little angle there, but that's okay. Let's flip this over and let's do this side. So we're gonna do two inches down and we're gonna do one inch over, which I can see right about there. This doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's always nice to have perfect, but if it's not perfect, it's okay. Now, we are going to stitch these areas, okay? So this is what it looks like all done. And let me go ahead and just mark this one real fast. Let me not lose you guys. I'll just go real fast, but you can see how easy this is that you can do it, which I could actually just use my mat here. Those two, and I'm gonna just draw my line, all right? Let's mark this side. So I'm doing two inches down, one inch over, and I'm gonna just mark that like that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the last two. So two inches down, it can't be too difficult to remember that, right guys? Two inches down, one inch over. Okay, last last one. Oop, I didn't draw my line. Let's do, draw the line. Now let's go over here, and I am using a Sharpie marker so it's obnoxious so that you guys can see it. You guys could use anything you want, but I want you guys on the video to be able to see these lines. Okay, so now I have these two different pieces right here. I'm going to just go ahead and stitch this close because it's going to taper this square to become a bowl shape, all right? So let's go ahead and this is what's going to taper it. And as you're doing this, let's go ahead and get smart here and let's kind of string these together. So we can put another one right over here and go a little faster with what we're doing, right? Okay, let's pull that off. Okay, so now you can see that there is a taper there. So just like that, see that nice little taper? Let's go ahead and go to the opposite side. So right here, and I'm going to just taper this. And let's go ahead and go like that. And these go so fast. I love doing things that are fast, fun projects every so often because you know, you really get a kick out of it. It just gives you lots of warm fuzzies and just makes you feel good about yourself to accomplish something sometimes that's fast and fun and all of that. Although I've got so many things I want to do. What about you guys? What are some other things that you want to do? Diana or Laura, I'm a visual learner too. I really am. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Um, but yeah, I'm a visual learner too. But boy, it feels good to make something quickly. 
every so often to have a quick quick make. But this is great for gifts. What would be some other great gifts that we can make? Um, what are some other great things that we could do some more tutorials to do? Just small things that we can brighten up somebody's days. Now I know that there might be kind of more hot weather than we want right now, possibly. I'd love, you guys, I'm gonna do a funny picture for you guys, just to entertain you. But I'm wanting so badly to go swim or to go get in water or something. So I bought some, um, some glittery inner tubes that I'm going to lay in in my backyard. Okay, there's our two tapered pieces, all right? So you can see how these are working just great right here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna just take one of these and we're going to obnoxiously with my big Sharpie marker, we're going to taper and you can use any kind of curved thing. We're gonna just mark one of these, okay? And we're gonna lay that down and I'm using the Sharpie marker for this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is how you get the curves. And it really is this one effort right here. Um, but some people might like the pokies or the pokey sides, because then you can maybe pick it up better. I don't know. Everybody's different. I just, I don't know. It's always fun to do something different. Okay, I got some fluff and batting on that. Let me take that off without getting too much on me. Okay, I think we're done with that. Here's my bowl. Here's my cute little stack. Okay, so now... What I'm going to do is this one is marked, okay, with the curve. So I'm now going to nest these two together. Although, before I do that, I have to, I, oh good, here's my scissors. I need to trim the excess of this fabric off. I am not going to trim my curved edges yet, okay? I kind of want that extra fabric because we're dealing with something that's batting, okay? And things shift around as you're sewing them. So I'm gonna just let things kind of shift a little bit. I'm gonna stick some pins in it. But okay, so we've got that all trimmed off, our excess little fabric with our tapers. So we wanna trim that. And here I am again, using my scissors to do this. And we're just gonna go like that and trim off our tapers. Okay, I still have my obnoxious, um, cute little Sharpie marker for you guys. If anybody unpicked that, they'd be like, what did she put in there? Anyways, okay, so now I'm going to nest these two together. Right sides together. Super easy, you guys. And you can see they have the points. Now, if you want to do them pointed, this is the point where you just stitch around with the points. You go around and you stitch with the points, okay? So if you want to keep it pointed, you just stitch it as it is, but we're gonna stick a pin in it, okay? So let's go ahead and just stick a pin in it so we, things don't shift around too much. It's always nice if we can make things match up, right? Because we as quilters and sewists, we like to have things look nice. All right, so I've got these pinned. I've got the, right, the two right sides facing together and I've got my little point, so as I'm stitching, I can kind of make sure these points are matching first. I'm gonna use this side, you guys. It looks like a sand dollar. Oh, you know, that is so sweet, Deborah. I have the best memory with sand dollars as a little girl. We always had an RV uh, growing up. Corey and I, we just sold our RV, and now we're kind of missing it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? But we didn't use it as the kids got older. So we just sold our RV, but now we're just like, why did we just do that? Why did we just sell an RV? But when I was a little girl, we had an RV. Now I'm just gonna stitch over my curved line and match these seams. But when I was a little girl, we had one and we went um, camping on the beach in Southern California. And we actually lived down there as a, as a little girl. And we woke up one morning and there were sand dollars just everywhere. And a different day, there, there I don't know, maybe there was a storm. I could ask. Anyways, and then the other time there were sand dollars. I mean, there was starfish everywhere. And it was just the best memory ever of being with my family and just finding something so magical on the beach. So... Anyways, okay, so I have this one side 
I'm, I, I'm just about finished, you guys. This one side is open. I'm gonna leave about two inches of this side open. This is where I started, all right? So I'm gonna leave about two inches of this open and we are gonna go back around that. So let's just go about right here because we need to turn this baby inside out. All right, you guys, isn't it fun to have something fast to do? Now we're gonna just trim off our little, what is a sand dollar? Oh, Jane, there, there's something that are in the ocean and Jane is from South Wales and there's something that are in the ocean and they're like a, they're like, they're just, an, it's an animal, but it's a seashell, right? You guys help me. Oh, Lynette, you just got a travel trailer. I know, Corey and I, we were looking at travel trailers because you know what? I'd love to just go around the country and see all you guys and drive around and wave as we go past your house or something. I don't know. I'm being silly. Hi, Norma from Canada. I'd love to drive up to Canada, but I don't think you Canadians would let us Americans in right now. Us Americans, we are a mess right now with this coronavirus. You guys are doing really good up there. I'd love to come visit Canada. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna take out the pins so I don't hurt myself turning this inside out, right? Okay, now I'm sure you guys would love us. I do not know what any of that is. I just know that, you know, this pandemic is just crazy right now, isn't it? Um, so anyways, it's good to have you guys all here and that we can hang out together and have fun together. Okay, we're turning this inside out. We're birthing our soup pad, our soup bowl. Okay, I'm kind of matching, bringing my seams out. I could use my point to point turner, but I don't think I really need it. I'll just use my finger on this one. There's no really big points. It's all curved. It looks so pretty. And we're gonna do a finishing stitch on this too. Oh my gosh, look at how my seams, my, my quilted seams matched up. Too fun. I doubt that happened everywhere, but oh my gosh, it matched up there, just about there. That's uncanny. I, I wasn't trying for that really a lot. How fun, it's always fun. You guys, we have so much abundance and we have so much to be grateful for, no matter what we're doing. And Lynette, I know, she, Lynette has grandkids and she is gonna take her kids on some trips. Um, her grandchildren and my, my mom used to do that. Uh, my mom passed away some time ago. She had Lou Gehrig's and boy, that's a nasty disease. But boy, the memories, I do have a little granddaughter. Okay, we're gonna close this shut I'm gonna start stitching about right here, okay? And then when I come back around, I'm gonna turn that and close it. Let's go ahead and do a top stitch around so that when these bowls wash, which they'll need to be washed because soup can get sloppy, right? Um, so we're gonna just go ahead and finish, do a finishing stitch on here. This is once again when I'm glad that I have my open toe foot on so it can handle going through all these layers. A quilting foot would be great, but you know, I just want a little bit, maybe a newer needle or a denim needle while I'm working with this many layers. Um, uh, I wouldn't want my narrow quarter inch foot on here because I might, as I'm shifting and pushing through all these layers and these seams, because right here I'm, I'm going through even more layers because it's on the seam of this. Um, I could knit my needle on that quarter inch foot, right? So it's just a good time to kind of switch your feet around. Although I'm always scared of losing a foot. Um, I don't know. But I didn't lose my original quilting foot, did I? That one that I pulled out. Okay, so now we're gonna just fold over these little seams right here. I'm gonna just finger um, do this so that they finger are finger closed and make that look nice. And then we're gonna have our little soup co cozy. Maybe I'll have to, you guys, my garden. I'm trying to be more in, I don't know, like more self-sufficient and learn how to garden and I'm not, not doing too good, but it's okay. I'm learning a lot, right? This is like if you're a new quilter or whatever, you learn when you're going. I really just want to harvest a tomato. My goal is to get a tomato, but I am going to get some things. I'm going to get some zucchinis. I'm going to get some, I have a bunch of herbs. <laughs> um, oh, I have three snap peas. 
You guys, I wish I had enough vegetables to make some soup. My little zucchinis are only about that big right now, but boy, I'd love to make some homemade soup right now at this moment for Corey when he comes home. House can smell great. Okay. Okay, so, which I'm so grateful to that man. He's such a good, good man. All right, let's go ahead and turn this. I'm gonna snip my things. And then look at that, you guys. We now have a soup bowl cozy. So let's go ahead and switch the camera to the front camera. Wasn't that fun and just so simple, classy, and just playful to use? You could do the soup bowl cozy, the curved super cozy as curved. All the instructions are in here, or you could do it as pointed. So whichever way that looks good for you, you just go ahead and do it. But look at how fast and easy that was, and what a great fun project. Um, we could use this to hold something next to our sewing machines or in other places of the house, um, or we can use them for our soup too, or for something, who knows? Anyways, I just love these, and I love this fabric too, and I just love how playful this is. This would be fun to have in your um, trailer, Lynette, um, to have some of these, um, you know, for your, for your trip. Anyway, so as you're camping or who knows what. Um, uh, some pot roast, who knows. Anyways, okay, you guys, that is my video tutorial for you today. The Curved Soup Bowl Cozy. You can find the tutorial and the pattern at stitchesquilting.com. It's a complimentary pattern just for you. So go download it. Um, you can get it from making comments in the post of uh, Facebook. Just go ahead and say, send me the pattern and it will send you the pattern if you're on the original video at the Stitches Quilting um, post. If you're on YouTube, it's in the description of the link. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to follow me and turn on your post notifications so that when I go live, you can join me. So it is so good to see. Yes, ta-ta for now, Lynette. So I will see you guys a little bit later. You guys have a great day. I'm so anxious to pop in to Everyone Can Quilt and to see what you guys are making today or what you're working on. We'll see you guys a little bit later. Love you guys so much. Enjoy and have fun and stay positive. Okay, we'll talk to you a little bit later. Bye.